So if you're looking for a pair of headphones to fly with and if you want to block out the absolute most amount of noise, then the Sony 1000XM5s are going to be your best bet as of early 2023. They block out more noise than the AirPod Max and they block out more noise than both of Bose's headphones, just to name a few. However, the XM5s are a little bit more expensive or perhaps you're still rocking the Sony 1000 XM4s or maybe you're just a base head and you have the Sony XB910N. Now, right now I am doing a little bit of traveling so that's why I'm currently outside of the studio but I do have some real world airplane ANC tests for you because ANC performance on headphones does change if you're at cruising altitude because of the lower atmospheric pressure. That's why some headphones like the Sony 1000 XM5s, the XM4s, and even the XM3s have atmospheric pressure sensors so that they can recalibrate their ANC so that it can perform at its best. Whereas with the mid-tier Sony XB910Ns, they don't have an atmospheric pressure sensor in them. But nonetheless, we're going to jump into the ANC test right now. So first off, just as you'd expect, since the XB910Ns are a pair of mid-tier ANC headphones, they don't block out as much noise as both the XM5s and XM4s, which I would categorize as a pair of premium ANC headphones. But just so that we're perfectly clear, the XB910Ns block out an adequate amount of noise for a pair of mid-tier ANC headphones in early 2023. Now, even though the XB910Ns don't block out a ton of noise, their ANC can still come in handy if you're on a bus or in a chatty office. However, if you are planning on flying, then you might want something a little bit more effective. Next up, there's the XM4s. Now, like you may have just seen in this ANC test, there was a pre-calibration sound sample and a post-calibration sound sample. That's because if you're going to be flying with these, it's best that you calibrate them when you reach cruising altitude. And you can calibrate this headphone either by using its app or you can just press and hold on their custom button for like 5 seconds and then they'll enter calibration mode. Now, I'm going to be honest. Even after going through the calibration process with the XM4s, there was really no noticeable difference with the before and after. And personally, I am very surprised by this because when I did a similar test with the Sony 1000 XM3s, the XM4s predecessors, there was a noticeable difference with the before and after. And in general, the XM3s continue to block out more noise than the XM4s. But then there's the XM5s. Now, the XM5s also has an atmospheric pressure sensor in them, but you don't have to manually calibrate them all the time like you do with the XM4s or XM3s. The XM5s will automatically calibrate themselves depending on your wearing style and the atmospheric pressure around you. Now, some people claim that the automatic calibration on the XM5s leads the ANC on these headphones to wildly fluctuate from time to time. Now, personally, I have never experienced this and I even tried to capture an instance of this happening while I was wearing these headphones on the airplane but it just never happened. But more importantly when it comes to ANC performance the XM5s block out noticeably more noise than the XM5s. So if you're looking for a pair of headphones to fly with and if you want to block out the absolute most amount of noise then the Sony 1000 XM5s are going to be your best bet. However, 
Personally, the XM5s are not my preferred headphones to fly with because, for starters, their case is rather big. This case does have a rather large footprint and it is rather thick, so flying with this case just isn't super convenient. Also, the XM5s aren't the most comfortable headphones out there because of their rather shallow ear pads and their minimally padded headband can create a hot spot after wearing them for like an hour or so. Personally, I would actually prefer to fly with the XM4s over the XM5s because first off, the ear cups on the XM4s are a lot more spacious and their headband has a lot more padding. But also, the XM4s have a much smaller case, so traveling with this case is just going to be a lot easier. And also, the XM4s block out a decent amount of noise as well. So if you're trying to choose between the XM4s and XM5s for flying, then you might want to take this into consideration. But also, if you already have the XM4s, there's really no need need to rush out and upgrade to the XM5s. But right now, I do want to enter speculation territory. Now, in this ANC video, we're basically testing the ANC performance of Sony's current ANC headphone lineup, and we've got the mid-tier XB910N, the XM4s, and the XM5s. However, the entry-level Sony Wacha 710Ns are in tier. Now, they're not here for two main reasons. The first reason is that I simply forgot to pack them. But also, I really feel that the successors to the entry-level Sony Wacha 710Ns are right around the corner. And I say this because the Sony Wacha 710Ns came out in the spring of 2020, which is a lifetime ago in the tech world. But also, more interestingly enough, the Sony Watch 710Ns are currently out of stock on Sony's website. Now, sadly, I do feel that the Sony Watch 710Ns are a downgrade from their predecessor, the Sony Watch 700N. Mainly because the 710Ns did lose app support, and I really don't know why Sony got rid of app support on their entry-level headphones. But also, the 710Ns do have lessened build quality than the 700Ns. So, for the 710N's successors, I do want to see app support come back because, again, I don't know why Sony got rid of it. But also, I do want to see better build quality for the 710N's successors, specifically the Leatherette. And I do think that's possible because Sony is finally doing Leatherette very well. But overall, if you're looking for a pair of headphones to fly with and if you want to block out the absolute most amount of noise, then the Sony 1000 XM5s are your best bet. But personally, I would prefer the XM4s because of their more comfortable fit and smaller case. And also, I would keep an eye out for Sony's new entry-level ANC headphones, which I feel are right around the corner.